This is October 17th, Year of Our Lord. Thanks, ladies. 2019. Happy birthday, Uncle Rudy. Rudy would be my brother. Our birthdays are like one day apart. My siblings go like this. My oldest sister, her birthday's not all the same year, okay? Some of you are looking at me like, wait a minute. How, how's that possible? My oldest sister, September 20th. That, Rebecca. Then my younger sister's October 9th. Then my older brother's October 17th, and I'm October 18th. So all of the siblings are within like four weeks of each other. Not the same year, Laura. What are all their names? Don't pair it here. Rebecca, Rudy, Karen. You just wanted to hear me say Karen again. Okay. Yesterday, we did not get a chance to go over 7 through 20, 126, 127. And I know you're hoping that goes away because you didn't, you know. But listen, there's a reason we got to do it again. Because if it's something that's challenging and you haven't quite grasped yet, then of course it's not going away. It's going to stay until you come to it. It's cold. It is? It's cold in here. By the way... Hopefully you were properly and rightly educated in some fashion this week about Columbus Day. Because if all you got out of Columbus Day was what you might have heard on the news or heard here and there, wow, because there was a whole lot of hate going on this week about Christopher Columbus. A whole lot of hate about a guy whose main primary mission was to tell all the rest of the world that he would go explore about Jesus Christ. And of course... There was profit to be made because he was sailing for the king of Spain, but a whole lot of people want to rewrite history and make him into a bad guy. Sad times. We All right. That's my little sermonette for the day. Back to math. Of course, Columbus had to know math in order to do all the navigating and things that he did to come to this new world. Here we go. Number seven. We, we went through that. I know we got through number 10. We got to 11, right? Because we wrote, uh, Miss Noel gave me her example of five times something minus six equals nine. Uh, did we finish the forks? Yeah, seven boxes. You would have needed seven more boxes of forks. That takes us to 13. Page 127, 13, making sure that we go over the homework you had the other day. Uh, you, you subscribe to magazines that cost $26 yearly. How do you think Mr. Franklin's going to start this equation? What's my strategy? Z. Oh. What do I always do? I always start like this. Yeah. I know in the end I'm going to end up spending $26. Now, what are the, what's the question at the end of the paragraph? How much is each payment? That's what I don't know and what I want to find out. So what should I let equal the dollar amount of each payment? Want to just stick with X? X. We'll stick with X. Okay. So if X is how much each payment is, what did they tell me? I made an initial payment of $5, then I made three equal payments. So I've already paid 5 and I'm going to add to that $5. How many more payments? Three. Three. Three of these. Stop there. You see how that works? I translated that paragraph in English into an algebraic equation. I'm going to end up spending 26 bucks. That's going to be my total. I've already spent five. It tells me I have three more of these. Not to write let x equal. Let x equal them how much each payment's going to be. And now I've got the old two-step equation, 3x by minus 5 and minus 5 is 21, x equals 7, as I divide by 3. Does that make sense to everybody? So x equals 7 and number 13. Number 14, write a one-step equation and a two-step equation that both have 8 as a solution. This was all, what would you come up with? 
It's all on you. There's, I can't give you the answer. You tell me. Just a one step. Go ahead. Yeah. 24 divided by x, like 24 over x okay. equals 3. All right. She said a one step is 24 over x. Did you mean to write over x or did you mean to write? Okay. I don't know. Equals 3? Yeah. I don't know. Is that what you meant to do? Okay, we can do this. It's actually going to end up being two steps, though. Kind of. Because watch what happens. How do I get rid of the 20? Most of the problems you've been doing have the x on top, right? x divided by something, then you multiply. But since she's brought this up, how am I going to figure this out? It says 24 divided by x. So how would I figure out what x is? Watch this. This was not planned, but the fact that she did this, everybody pay attention. The fact that we have a problem like this with x, Rach, in the denominator, you've never seen before. How would you handle this? Anybody got a suggestion? How would I find out what x is if x is in the denominator? Every problem you've done so far, x is in the numerator. She's right. This is going to end up being, the solution is going to be 8, right? Anybody got an idea what to do before I show you? Yeah? What's it? You can. Because division is not commutative. You can't say that 20, uh, you can't say that 8 divided by 2 is the same as 2 divided by 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 8 is 1 4. Sit. Multiply what? No, because they're not dividing x by 24. If it was x divided by 24, I would multiply. What? You divide it by x. No, they already divided by x. Well, so you're getting multiply closer. It by x. Multiply by x. Watch what happens if I multiply both sides by x. x over 1, right? These would cross cancel. That would leave me with 24 over here. And if I multiply this side by x, what must I do over there? Multiply the other side by x. Multiply it by x, which would leave me 3x. See how it ends up being two steps? Yeah. So then, how do I get rid of this? Divide by 3, divide by 3, and x equals 8. See, we've never encountered that yet, where x is in the denominator. How do I fix that? I multiply both sides by x, and now I've got my standard 3x equals 24. Does everybody understand why that's possible and how that happened? Because yeah. remember, as long as you add, subtract, multiply, or divide, both sides of an equal sign by the same thing, the equation stays true and equal. You're just getting it. Look, what did we do? We just kind of finagled things into an equation that we know how to solve. Everybody's looking at me silent and kind of getting the affirmative looks and nods, but yet I still got this overwhelming feeling that you're not real sure about that yet. Yes? I have a Okay, what do you got? Go ahead. Uh, 14 minus 14. 14. I still don't feel it, so I can't do it. Maybe tomorrow. 14 minus n equals 6. Yeah. Add, 14 Add 14 to both sides. Just so you know, you want your solution to be 8, right? So if I add 14 here and 14 here, I'm going to get negative n equals 20. No. No. You're not wrong. What do I do? Do I add 14 or subtract 14? Subtract. Right, because this is a positive 14. So if I subtract 14 here and subtract 14 there, I got negative n equals, not 8, 6 minus 14. You're going to end up in the right place. Negative n equals negative 8. So if the opposite of n equals the opposite of 8. Well, then n equals 8. Oh? Yeah. Yeah. How could I fix this to make it positive n? Multiply both sides by? N. N. Negative. What? Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative one. Because this is a negative 1. If I multiply negative 1 times negative 1, I've got... 
positive 1. And if I multiply negative 8 by negative 1, I've got positive. But then that's two steps. Well, yeah, once you have to do the negative, it ends up being two steps. Okay. <laughs> number 15. How would you write the sum of 2 times a number and 5 is 12? Hopefully this is lightening it up a little bit. With 15, I'm thinking David's going to be able to read that sentence and tell me what to write as far as an algebraic equation. The sum of 2 times a number and 5 is 12. David. Yep. Wow me. Go ahead. Uh, two and Outstanding. You have whatever you made your variable. Is that what you wrote for fifteen? Please say yes. Yes. It could be two x, two t, two n, two whatever. Two n plus five equals twelve. The sum, Jonathan, you're gonna add something. What are you adding? Two times a number and five. What's it gonna be? Twelve is 12. Number 16. The difference of the product of 3 and a number and a half and a negative a half is negative 5 over 2. This one's a little more complicated. Anybody want to take a shot? Wow, we are so quiet. I'm cold. Kira? Yeah, I'm going to Go ahead. Uh, is it 3 minus 1 half no, because the product of the it's the product of three and a number. So you can't put you can't take three minus a half, then times the number. Jay. I don't want to say what she said. Three x minus negative one half equals negative five over six. There you go. You got something like this. She used x as a variable minus the difference of three times a number, the difference of three times a number, and negative one half is negative five over two. If you got that, that's impressive. Pat yourself on the back. I don't see many pats on the back, and that's okay. Again, this is still kind of new to us. Let's break this down. Let's let's translate it back into a paragraph or a sentence. The difference, subtraction, subtracting, of three times a number and negative one half. I'm saying it again. The difference of three times a number and negative one half. I'm going to say it again. Spence, look. Why do I have a subtraction sign there? Because it says the difference of three times a number and negative one half. Still not 100%. We need 100% affirmative looks and nods, and not just to get me to go on. Let me watch, watch again, Z. The difference of three times a number and negative one half is negative five over two. Next, 17. All right, we'll get to the solvent once we get through the translation. The sum of negative two times a number and 3.5 is 7.5. Somebody new? Spence. Yep. Negative 2n plus 3.5 is 7.5. There you go. Negative 2n plus 3.5 is 7.5. Is that what you got? The sum of negative 2 times a number and 3.5 is 7.5. Getting better? 18. 3 less than the quotient of a number and two. Three less than the quotient of a number and two. Quotient is the answer to a fella. Mm. X over two. Listen, it's the quotient of a number and two. 
It's the quotient of a number and 2. Follow that? Big difference between x over 2 and 2 over x. The quotient of a number and 2. 3 less than the quotient of the number and 2 is 8. Cam? Cam's trying to give a... She's giving one of those, like, smiles that says, do I tell him I still don't get it? What's he want me to say here? Number 19. Oh, let's solve these now. Where do I start? Sum of 2 times a number and 5. 2n equals 7. n equals... Three and a half. This one. Three x. What's what's minus negative a half? You don't actually subtract. Minus negative a half is actually plus a half, right? So if this is plus a half, that means I have to subtract a half from both sides. Boy, that's complicated. Let's go through that again. This is heady stuff today. If this is 3x minus negative, negative a half, it's actually 3x plus a half. I'll stop there. David, do you understand that 3x minus negative a half is actually 3x plus a half? Yeah. You sure? Okay. So that would equal negative 5.2. Now I have to subtract a half from both sides. Negative 5.2 minus a half. Jonathan's thinking negative 5 over 2 is actually 2 and a half. So if I have negative 2 and a half and I subtract 2 and a half, I'm sorry, a half, that gets me to negative 3. So my answer is x equals negative 1. Wait, what? Uh -huh. I'll stop here. Does everybody understand what I did? Is that big enough to see? 3x minus negative half is actually 3x plus a half equals negative 5.2. So now I've got to uh, uh, subtract one half from both sides. Leaves me with 3x over here. What is negative 5 over 2 minus a half? No, minus a half. Negative. It's negative 6 over 2. Negative 5 minus 1. The denominators are the same. Keep the denominator. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 over 2. Well, what's negative 6 over 2? Negative 3. So then I divide both sides by 3. The answer is negative 1. <laughs> no, a test till at least middle late next week. Look, let's start back here. Do you understand? David says yes. I get it. Minus negative half is actually plus a half. Do I have universal agreement on that? Yes. Okay. Now, if I have plus a half, how do I get rid of it? Subtract a half. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. So you know how to do fractions. You got the same denominator. What do you do with the numerators? Five. Add them or subtract them. You have a negative 5 minus 1. What's negative 5 minus 1? Plus negative 1. It's negative 5 outside, and it goes down 1 degree. Now what's the temperature? That's it. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 over 2. Yes, we have to add. What is negative 6 divided by 2? Negative, negative 3. Yeah, I'm just saying that five, negative 5 over 2 is actually not minus in half. Right? What, Kira? <laughs> negative 5 over 2, yeah. the only thing you do to that is subtract a half. Yeah. So you get negative? What? No, I get it. 
All right. Did you have to do through 20? Yeah. 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 18? Yeah. We're not right there. Up here? Yeah. Okay. First thing I got to do, Jordan, is get rid of this. So what am I going to do with both sides? Right now it's negative three. How do I get if they subtract three? What do I do? I undo it by adding three. So if I add three to this side, that leaves me with x over two, and I add three to this side, that leaves me with eleven. X divided by two. How do I get rid of the two? Multiply. Multiply by two. Cross cancel, leaves me with x times 2, x equals 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 minus 3 is 8. If I plug this in to check it, what's 3 times negative 1? 3. No. Oh, negative 1, three. negative 3. Negative 3 minus... Negative a half is actually negative three plus a half. Negative three plus a half, negative two and a half. You do recognize five over two is two and a half, right? Yes. Yeah. Five over two is two and a half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any questions? No. <laughs> Liars? No. What? Remember when math was just sit there and add, subtract, multiply, and divide? Yeah, it's not yeah. Easy. I didn't like that. Simple. I loved it. Oh, you like this where you actually have to think? Is that right, Micah? No. You're in math now where you actually have to think instead of just sit there and compute. Okay. The senior class at your school made a $300 profit at the school fair by having a dunk tank. The dunk tank cost $125 to rent. They charged $5 per person to play. How many people played if in the end you had how much money? What can I erase here? Everything. Oh, yeah, you wish, you, you'd like to erase it from your... I would just like Mine to forever. No, I would just like so Zacchaeus says, Mr. Frank is going to write, equal. in the end, it's all going to equal $300, right? Yes. What do they tell us? What do I need to know, I mean? How many people played? I'm going to let P equal <laughs> number of people, okay? How many people played? What do they tell me? The dump tank cost the senior class how much to rent? $125. So let me ask you a question. Am I going to add that to how much money I make or subtract that from how much money I make? No, I'm going to subtract it because that's a cost to me. Listen, if you guys had a, a fundraiser like this and you had to rent the dump tank for $125, I'm not going to add that to your fundraiser. You're actually having to subtract that. You with me? So, okay, hold on. What do you mean wait? You're paying for the dunk tank, so you're subtracting that, aren't you? You're ending up with $300. Listen, if you made $300 profit, everybody engage your minds. I know it's hard. It's the first time you've had to do this for some of you to really think. If you are ending up with $300 profit, they're not giving you $125 to use their dunk tank. You're renting it from them. You're subtracting $125 from whatever you make in order to end up with a profit. Yeah, I get that. Okay. So, how many people used your or played your game if... It was five dollars for each person. Five P.
There's your equation you should have set up. 5x, okay. How do you get rid of the negative 125? You add 125. You add 125 to both sides. That's why I was confused about because you didn't tell me you couldn't add it. And you've got 5p equaling 425. So what's p equal? Some of you can do this in your head. 425 divided by 5. 85. 85. So 85 people came to play. They all paid five bucks. You made $425. Oh wait, we got to pay the people we rented from 125. So how much did we make profit? 300 bucks. <laughs> Number 20. Do they even have taxi cabs anymore? I'm sure they do yeah, all throughout yeah. big yeah, cities like Chicago, New York. But with Lyft and Uber, it seems like taxis are going by the wayside. Anyway, taxi cab charges two dollars, a two dollar fee plus a dollar fifty for every mile driven. And that would be cheap for today. Two dollars just to get in their cab, and every mile they take you, it's going to cost a dollar fifty. Your cab ride costs seventeen dollars. How many miles did you travel? What am I going to write first? Yeah. No. No. I might end up there, but what am I going to write first to set up my equation? Oh. That the total is going to be. Oh, it's going to be seventeen dollars. So here's what I know. The total's going to end up being 17. Here's what I don't know. The question's asking, how many miles did you travel? So I'm going to let M equal number of miles. What do they tell me about the number of miles? How much does each mile cost? 1.5. You with me? Dollar and a half. How much did I have to spend? Just getting in the cab. Am I going to add or subtract that $2? Add. I'm going to add. So I've got 1.5M plus 2. Yes. Please raise your hand. But don't raise your hand if you don't get it. Don't lie. Do you understand why this is the equation yes. to solve that problem? Can I switch it to plus 1? Yes, that's the same thing. It's addition. So how do I get rid of the two? Subtract, Subtract yeah. from both sides. Sid the kid, I haven't seen your eyes yet today. Okay. Subtract from both sides, that gives me 15 over here. 1.5M equals 15. And you know what's cool about that? Some of you could do that in your head. Because you know that multiplying and dividing by powers of 10, all you're doing is moving the decimal point. So if I was to take 15 and divide it by, I need a bigger board today, and divide it by 1.5, 10. That taxi cab is taking me 10 miles. And it's going to cost me $17. Woo! Okay. We must move on. Got to. Listen. Uh, remind me to go on RunWeb and change it because Isaac said I'm going to be in Texas, and I told him that if I change the homework that's on there, that I'll I'll let him know. Because there's so little time, just go ahead and finish. Page 131. Remember yesterday we did 1 through 4 together? 131. Before we tackle something new, with only 7 minutes left, finish 131. You are, we already did 1 through 4 together yesterday. So just do 5 through 8. Yes? Just 5 through 8. 131. Wow, what a mess.
Listen, if it makes you feel any better, having to do that for the first time to figure out equations to write, there's going to be more stuff in the future that's easier than that. But if you're thinking, oh boy, I'm done. I don't get that, and if I don't get that, and we've got so much more to go in algebra, then I'm not going to be able to get any of this. That's not true because I believe that, that was a very, that's a very difficult thing to do the first time you have to learn how to do it. I mean, you've never had to do anything like that before. Like, write your own equation. Some of you didn't like story problems to begin with when they give you all the information, let alone having to write it yourself. Yes? Uh, can you do number five? Sure. You're going to a museum, your teacher buys 32 tickets. They're all the same price. The total charge for all the tickets is 256 What's the price of the ticket? What am I going to do first? I'm going to go like this. The total price is going to end up being 256 how many kids are going? 30. I'm going to let T equal how much each ticket cost. Okay? What did they, because that's what they want to know, how much each ticket is, right? How many kids are going? 32. So look at this. 32 times each ticket is going to cost 256. So I divide both sides by 32. And thankfully, they make it come out nice and crisp and clean. Noelle's trying to do that in her head. 256 divided by 3. She thinks to herself like this. Watch. She thinks 8 goes into 240 30 times. I mean, why did I divide by 8? Because I already got the because I, I got the answer in my head. I was no I. I, was like, oh, I knew the answer, so I divided by the answer. I didn't have She's going to divide by 32. So, Nicole, Nicole's thinking to herself, Noel, Don't worry, I've been called Jonas before. Yeah, I was called Jonas. She's not that pretty. All right. She's thinking 30 goes into 248 times. So 32 goes into 256 eight times. So each ticket costs eight times. <laughs> <laughs> you messed that bell up. <laughs> I said Capri? I did not call it Capri. No, I said you messed up. No, you messed her up. You need it backwards. Oh. Why are you messed up? Well, thanks. It's not until tomorrow. Oh, which reminds me. I'm not quite sure how we're going to handle tomorrow because I'm actually not going to be in here because I'm with a fifth grade field trip. I mean, you'll still have pre-algebra. What? I think that's why they did. No, Mrs. Coy said. Which then means definitely I have to go on Red Web and change the homework. Julia, Johnny, and Sawyer. Are you so going to practice? Today? That'll be changed no, because not, not I will yet. not be on. There won't be a video lesson tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Johnny played basketball. Where are you guys? Who is on the sub? Don't know you. Where are you guys? Oh, I'm on the street. Bethel. Is it Mr. Gunn? Bethel Church for some uh, fun, uh, some kind of treatment. I love it. Mission.